today we're going to talk about section 2.2. We're talking about nutrition and energy flow. Are you guys ready to do it? Yeah. Okay, well, let's do it. Inside this section, we always got to talk about talking about what we're going to talk about. Does that make sense? We've got to talk about talking about what we're going to talk about. <coughs> Never mind. First, we're going to talk about the source of energy. Where does energy come from? Secondly, we're going to talk about consumers and producers. Then we're going to talk about cycles in nature, and that's how we're going to end this, the chapter. <laughs> All right, so let us get into the section. Where does energy come from? Somebody answer my question. Where does energy come from, ultimately? The sun. The sun I like it. All the power to run, to wake up in the morning, to do anything, to think. Anything else that a living organism does requires energy. <coughs> Very important. And ultimately, we see that all of that energy, ultimately, comes from the sun. So the sun has to have a lot of energy, right? Uh, we're going to talk about how this uh, works. And here you can see an x-ray from this x-ray of the sun that was done by NASA. And I found that on their website, so I thought it's pretty sweet. Yes? Is this an x-ray black and white? It can be. Usually the ones that we typically see are black and white, but it doesn't have to be that way. It was green, yeah. And some, uh, it, some of that might just have to do with the fact that they um, edit it differently or whatever the case might be. All right, so the, it's possible that they added color. I'm not exactly sure how they took this one. Um, I've never x-rayed the sun before. Um, maybe I should make that one of my lifelong goals. I don't know. But let's move on. So ultimately, where does all the energy come from? The sun. the sun. Sweet. So we know where the energy comes from. Let's talk about producers versus consumers. Producers are able to use energy from the sun to make their food. Plants. Plants, they don't need to eat food necessarily. They get water, of course. But they get their energy directly from the sun, and they are able to make um, stuff with that, to make food with that so that they can survive and get the stuff that they need. Can we do that? No. That would be cool, though, if we could do that, if we could just, man, I'm really hungry. Let me just go out in the sun. Oh, this feels good. Now I'm full. That would be awesome. Yeah. When it's too hot, you eat. <laughs> you, you'll, be, you'll be really full. If you're in a really hot place, everybody would be overweight then. That, that's what it would be. Because everybody would be going out in the sun all the time and getting all that energy and food, and then everybody would be fat. <laughs> all right, so producers are able to make their own energy from what they get directly from the sun. Another name for uh, uh, producers would be autotrophs. What is the name? Autotrophs. Oh, yeah, autotrophs. All right, so... Uh, examples would be plants and some weird bacteria that we call chemosynthetic autotrophs. Now, if you can say that, you can sound really smart. So if you want to like, impress your parents, you say, well, you just find a way to bring that into a conversation randomly. So they ask you, how's your day doing? And you're like, well, my day is very good. Did you see those chemosynthetic autotrophs? And, uh, well, that would probably be a weird way to have a conversation, but, you know, it, w what is the name? Ooh, that was pretty terrible. I'm not going to lie. We're going to do that again. What is the name? Okay, so they can make their own food. Um, consumers, on the other hand, why are they called consumers? They eat. They need to consume in order to get the energy. All right, consumers need to eat in order to get energy. Uh, another name for consumers would be heterotroph. What's the name? Heterotroph. heterotroph. So producers are what? Heterotroph. Producers are what? Heterotroph. No. No, 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 no. Shh, 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 What? Autotrophs. In general. All right? When, not artichoke, no. <laughs> producers are autotrophs. What are producers? Autotrophs. And consumers are? Heterotrophs. All right, producers are? Heterotrophs. I knew I'd get you guys. Come on, listen to what I'm saying. Producers are? Autotrophs. And consumers are? Heterotrophs. Okay, question. What would, a plant? what would a carnivorous plant be? 
Does it need to eat? Yes. 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 So what would that be? That's a good question, though. I like that. Sweet. All right, so those are heterotroph examples are animals, uh, humans we need to eat. We are heterotrophs. Now we're going to talk about the different types of heterotrophs. Number one, we have scavengers. And scavengers are those that rely on the efforts of others to find their foods. For example, vultures. Where do they get their food from? Dead animals. Dead animals. They're flying over, um, flying in the sky, and they come across the highway, and they see something on the side of the road, a dead deer. Sure, why not? A dead deer, a dead monkey on the side of the road? That'd be really strange. But hey, let's say they see a dead monkey on the side of the road for some strange reason. They're driving through Michigan and there's a dead monkey on the side of the road. They come down and they start feeding on that dead carcass, right? Then we have herbivores, herbivores, and those eat only plants. For example, cows. Cows chew on grass, right? They feed on grass and plants and so on. Those would be uh, herbivores. Then what are those that eat only animals? Carnivores. carnivores, okay, sweet. Animals that eat other animals are carnivores, and an example of that would be cats, lions, tigers. Grr, I'm a tiger. All right. Those eat only other animals. Those are referred to as carnivores. What if you eat both? Carnivores. All right. You guys are on point. I don't even need to teach this class. You guys can just leave. Oh, no, no, never mind. Just joking. All right. So omnivores are animals that eat both plants and other animals. For example, bears, humans, uh, we can eat plants. We can also eat animals. Now some of you are vegetarian and you don't eat animals, but you have the potential to eat animals. So you are an omnivore. Excuse me? So do omnivores. Yes, I mean, that, that is what we're talking so about. Herbivores, they have the potential to eat animals. They do? Yeah. Can they digest those animals though? That's the question. That is the question. What is the answer? I don't know. You don't know? If I've tried feeding beef to a cow, that's just mean. <laughs> The cow is eating like his brother or something like that. Why would you even suggest something like that? Man, I've never tried it. But um, they, their digestive tract is not set up to eat other animals. I know. Four. I thought it was five. It's four. Yeah. Imagine you have four stomachs. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be even sweeter. You, you know, you, you, you go out to a nice restaurant and you eat and you fill one stomach. You go someplace else, you're like, man, I'm hungry still. You fill the other stomach. That'd be awesome. You come home, your mom has a good meal. Well, it's all right. I'll put it in my other stomach. <laughs> all right, so that, those are omnivores. And then last but not least, we have decomposers. And they do exactly what they sound like they do. They, they decompose stuff. They break down and use nutrients from dead organisms all right if you bury something you bury a person or something of that sort um, eventually you'll see that there's no more skin left there are no more tissues there's just bones why well you have the decomposers that um, break down and use the nutrients from those dead organisms for example fungi you guys <laughs> you guys know my fungi joke don't you all right i won't say it again i'll spare you the misery um, we'll just, you forgot it? <laughs> well, since you forgot it, <laughs> hey, I will tell this joke until you leave my classroom. <laughs> no, okay, I'll spare you guys. You heard the fun guy joke already. Let's move on. You forgot? Okay, we'll go back. <laughs> since you're forcing me. So, let me see if I can make it a little different. One day, a mushroom was walking through the forest. The mushroom was going to the different plants, and he came to the first plant. He was like, nah, I don't want to hang out with that plant. He goes to the next plant. Nah, I don't want to hang out with this plant. Then he goes to a tree. He comes up to the tree, and he's like, whoa, this tree looks kind of cool. This tree looks kind of cool. I might want to hang out with this tree. So he goes up to the tree and says, tree, you want to hang out? The tree says, I don't want to hang out with you. I'm too cool for you. 
And the fun guy says, why not? I'm a fun guy. <laughs> oh, I messed up my own joke. How do I do something like that? That's just terrible. Oh, do I need to tell it again? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. All right, let, uh, let us uh, move on now and talk about food chains. What is a food chain? Food chains are the pathway of energy and matter through all organisms in an ecosystem. Okay, let's see if we remember the five levels of organization in ecology. Level number one. Well, don't look back in your notes. What is level number one? Okay, level number one. Two, population. population. Then three, Ecosystem. communities. Four, Ecosystem. and Biosphere. all right. So we're talking about we're talking about the flow of matter and energy through the ecosystem. And remember, the ecosystem is where we start thinking about the abiotic factors. What's the opposite to abiotic factors? Biotic, biotic factors. Um, so that's what we're talking about right now. Matter in the form of nutrients that. Matter is in the form of nutrients that organisms require. So when we're talking about matter, we're talking about the stuff that they need in order to survive, the stuff that they need to take, take in. When one organism eats another organism, it receives the nutrients and energy from the organism it ate. So if I eat you, I get... Wait, wait, no, that's not good. If I eat, if I eat uh, fruit, <laughs> that's much better than eating one of you guys. That would just be mean. If I eat a fruit, I am taking in nutrients and I'm getting energy from that fruit that I am eating. How do food chains look? What? How do food chains look? And th there's going to be a section in, one of your, in your homework assignment for today where you have to answer some questions about food chains. So we need to know how they look. Nutrition and energy start with autotrophs. All right? They get the energy from where? The sun, the sun directly. Um, and then it proceeds to heterotrophs, and eventually it goes back to these decomposers, and there's a kind of a cycle that um, continues, but we're going to talk a little about that. Every link in the chain only has about 10% of its total energy available for the next link in the chain. So 10% um, of the energy that is in a particular organism, only 10% of the energy is available to the organism that eats it. Does that make sense? So what's going to happen as you go up in the chain? Is there going to be more or less energy? Nice. There is going to be less energy, right? Because if you can only get 10% and then the, the one on top of that can only get 10%, it's going to become less and less as you go up. Yes, question? Meaning if I eat Mr. Samuels and he benches 180 pounds, that means I get 18 pounds more <laughs> to bench? Well, first of all, I don't think you should eat Mr. Samuel. That wouldn't be fun, for me especially. For you, I don't know how fun it would be. That's number one. But in terms of the amount of energy that's available from me, if you were to eat me, you could only get 10% of that energy. But the take-home lesson is do not eat Mr. Samuel. OK? All right, sweet. So here we see, I'll get your question in a second. Here we see um, we are starting with, what are we starting with there? Grass. Grass. Where does it get its energy from? The sun. The sun. All right, so it's getting energy from the sun. It's doing photosynthesis. We're going to talk about that later on this semester. And then what happens here? What's this? Grasshopper, Grasshopper is getting energy from the, the grass, which got the energy from the sun, right? And then what we have over here? Okay, we have a mouse that's getting energy from the grasshopper. And then what do we have here? Oh, yeah. Have you guys seen a snake eat a mouse before? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, If you've never seen it, you need to go to Mr. Carter's classroom when he's feeding. Uh, what's the name of the snake? Henry? No. I don't remember the name of the snake. But he does that every so often, so you can check that out and see how that works. It's, it's a pretty interesting process to watch. Well, not for the mouse, of course. All right, let's continue on now by talking about the different trophic levels. 